Making models of objects with AutoCAD in three dimensions isn't actually that difficult. But for many years, we struggled a little bit trying to get the things onto paper. Just recently, just a couple of years ago, AutoCAD introduced something which makes things a lot easier, which means basically you can get the things that you've drawn in model space onto paper with just a few mouse clicks, including elevations or views from the side, from above, from below, isometric views, sections, details, with or without hidden lines being shown, etc, etc. It's really just a dream. If you want to know how to do this, just keep watching the video. It's really easy. Just to whet your appetite, here's a, a plastic part I modelled a few years ago. And if we look in the model area here, we can see how complicated it really was back in the good old days. Not only did I have to model the object, I had to set up various user coordinate systems, I had to set up various layers so that I could distinguish between the different sections and so on. It was really, it was really quite a bind. It was a bit, bit over the top complicated. That's just to show how wonderful it is that all of that is now obsolete. Let's go to my first layout. Let's just move these things to the left. And then we can see how quickly these can be reproduced using our base command. So I call it out from the model space. Wonderful. We only have one object, so that's not so complicated. Here we have a plan view from the top in a scale of two to one. If you want to put dimensions on, you just need a dimension style set up with a scale factor of one to one. And so on we don't need to do everything but it as you can see it is really really quick and easy isometric views also no problem let's just copy that across just for fun use that as my reference point here it is to thingy. That'll do fine. Isometric views, also no problem. That looks like the right one here. From above, that's fine. Scale 2 to 1. actually that's actually from above so I think we're gonna to have to gonna to have to play with it so that's not a problem what I'm going to do is go here and set up the view which I want looking from below uh, that looks good and then we can go back here and say so from model space current scale 2 to 1 wonderful I'll just move these across just to complete it exactly 
wonderful, but as you can see, goes really, really quickly. Now I have the choice here. I can, can of course, change things afterwards. Um, I can decide whether I want to have the, the hidden lines there, for example. I think in this case I'll just have the visible lines. In this view it's a little bit too complicated otherwise. Let's do that here as well. Just visible. Fine. Okay, so that was very simple. Let's go on to something which is slightly more difficult. Let me move these things across. And then I'll generate a, a reference drawing here with a view from the top. Just pack that at the bottom. Enter twice. And now I'm going to draw a section here of a layout section. Which view do I want? Let me take this one. I want it right in the middle. No problem. Enter. Where do I want it? Here would be good. Scale. Let's do that up here. Two to one. Hatching is good. Hidden lines is also fine for a section. View label. Hatching. I just say OK. Now I'd quite like to actually have this independent of my reference drawing but I can't I can't do anything more than move it up and down because it's it's drawn in line with my uh, my base drawing I can get over that if I particularly want to I mean I could just move this across if I wanted but let's say I don't want that I want it to to be separate as it were one way of doing that is to rotate it and then just rotate it back and now I can move it independent of my reference drawing here and then I can do the, the measurements and so on exactly as I did before. How is it though if we have more than one object in the drawing? Can I for example select different objects which should appear in the drawing? nothing easier than that. Let's go to this drawing. Here if we go to the model area we can see I have one, two, three pieces of sheet metal and this is actually a, a strip lamp. And I just want to show the sheet metal. No problem, let's go to my layout area, go to base from model space, a view from the front I think Maybe I'll get it on the paper at 1 to 20. Uh, maybe that's just a little bit big if I want to have annotation and so on. 1 to 25, view from the front. View from the side. Wonderful. Um, let's edit the view. Model space selection. With my finger on the capital button, I can just uh, take this out the drawing set, return to layout, enter, and I just have my three pieces of sheet metal. And that's absolutely no problem if I want to have other views as well. Let's have an isometric view, but I think my model my model would actually be fine. So I go here, base from model current 1 to 25 okay I can go here again edit view model space selection and I'll just take that one out again okay I also want a view from the back I think in this case it's going to be easier to set up my view here at the in model space. Not quite sure why he's showing me that. So I think that's a view I want. So go back to our layout. 
paste from model space, click here, current scale 1 to 25, model space selection, without the lamp, return to layout, and we'll just put it here. Okay, I want my hidden lines here. I'm not sure if I want them here. Yeah, why not? We could we could leave them. But something I don't like is my sheet metal, of course, is bent here, or folded, whatever you'd like to say, and I don't have an edge along here, which means it looks a little bit imprecise. I mean, I know that's technically speaking what you see because the the corners are, are rounded. But I'd like it to be shown at least here in the in the three-dimensional views, in the isometric views, that there is actually a, an edge there. And I can actually do that without a problem. Over the edit view, let's put on my tangents. Say OK. better. Let's do the same thing here. Under certain circumstances it could be that you'd like these lines foreshortened in order to really show this isn't actually a proper edge as it were. I have a possibility to do that here and then the, these tangent lines don't actually go to the end of the the object but I think in this case it's a little bit more confusing than a real help. Okay what about details? Also no problem. Let's take a circular one, select parent view, um, circular in this case would be fine, smooth but not with a border but I'd like a connection line identifier, let's put a number this time. Show view label is good. Let's go here. There's detail number one. But I'd like it at a scale of 1 to 5. Uh, maybe not. Maybe 1 to 10. Here I can make adjustments as I, as I would like, but I'm quite happy with it as it is. Let's just uh, move these about a bit. I can move this as well as I want. That's really quite cool. And in fact, if I move this line, this number around, you can see there's a there's a leader here as well, which always identifies my my detail nicely. Now, if that isn't cool, I don't know what is. So, that was it for just now. But if you'd like to make any comments about the video, or if you have indeed any questions about this or any other videos, feel free to write the, the comments in at the bottom below the video. Or you can contact me directly over my website. The information for that will appear roughly about now. But also, at the end of the video, you will find a link where you can just click on it and you come straight to my website. You will also find a link to subscribe to my channel and I can sincerely recommend that because then in this way you can keep in touch with developments in AutoCAD, different subjects which I will deal with as I upload videos from time to time. So thanks very much for watching and see you soon.